going on YouTube? Back here with another video today. In today's video, we are working on the Lightning Fuel System Part 2. If you didn't see Part 1, make sure you go check that out first. I'll leave a link in the description. That way you'll understand everything going on in this video. But basically, we are building a custom fuel system using all Fragola 8000 series push lock race hose, push lock fittings, all that stuff. So, let's jump in where we left off. So in part one, we started under the truck at the gas tank side. We basically ran the return line all the way up into the engine bay since that's just one line all the way back. And then we ran the feed up until the point of the fuel filter. Like I said, make sure you go check those out first. But now we are gonna go ahead and get started on the rest of the feed and the rails all the way to button it up at the regulator. Um, I went ahead and mounted my regulator. This is what I ended up doing. Um, I like it kind of remote hidden over here. Generally, you do want to mount your regulator as close as possible to the rails. I guess it helps regulate the pressure better with the injectors firing. The further away the regulator, the not so ideally it can regulate the pressure. But I actually talked to a buddy of mine that did the exact same setup I'm going to do. He has zero issues with that. I think that's more of a theory than actual practice you can do remote regulators and it works just fine plus i'm not going to be pushing this thing to the absolute edge or limits so we should be good um, this is just the location i decided on because when i put the battery back in here it's gonna be nice and hidden kind of for a more stealthy look a lot of people hang their regulators either here or over here on the firewall but I'm not gonna have a whole lot of room with the intake setup we went with on this side. Um, I guess I could have did it on the firewall over here, but then I have vacuum hoses and stuff in the way. So I decided to kind of sneak it over here behind the battery. Um, you can see I custom made a bracket at the machine shop just to kind of space it forward and clear the wiring harness a little better with the hoses. Um, you can see I did a 180 coming off the far side that's a feed straight fitting so the both of those hoses will go straight through there's a gap in between the, all the wires there let me see if i can show you on camera it's kind of hard to do it justice but you can see there's a space right there where it'll easily go through um we have our return line like i said ran this is the return line with a 90 to feed into the bottom of the regulator right there so yeah, that's the regulator location I went with. Um, you'll see more when it's all actually all buttoned up. Um, last video, I went over an issue that we had with clearance of the heater hose because basically this 90 was interfering with where the heater hose goes in to the intake manifold. So I had to buy this straight fitting right there. And all that did is space the 90 out a little further and now we have plenty of clearance as you can see easily goes around the heater hose so we're good there i even test fitted it on the actual truck to make sure it's going to clear everything everything clears so that worked pretty well um so that's resolved and now we're going to start getting this thing together um basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to build a hose same way as last time um, I did find out a sweet spot for boiling, so I don't have any issues, it slips right on. I mean, it's still pretty tough, but it, I've never had one not go on all the way with my new strategy. Six minutes in the water, taken out, push it right on. Works really well. Um, and of course, with some Earls on the fitting. So, six minutes, I boil the end, take it out, push it on as quick as possible before the hose has a chance to cool, and we're good. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna build one end of a hose with a straight fitting. And what this is straight fitting is going to mount to the back of the rail, the white block right there. That's gonna be the feed. What I'll do is I'll put the straight fitting with the hose attached on there, feed it down to the filter, and that's how I will measure it. Basically I'll mount the rail up, feed it down, measure it, cut it, have to take that line back off put the other end on and then we can put the rail in and button that up so i'm going to go ahead and make the rest of the feed line and then i'll come back to you okay so we made a couple lines as you can see here we basically have the crossover line done 
That's the line that goes from the Y block to the back of the other rail. And we got the line that goes down to the fuel filter done. So basically this will run down into the fuel filter. And this one runs across the back. We'll tighten all these fittings now. Um, I'll have to leave this one off so I can kind of like snake it around underneath the heater hoses, get it in position, and then I'll tighten this up. First, we're gonna go ahead and get our injectors in. It's now time that we can get all this bolted up. So I'm gonna get the injectors in the truck. We'll get snake the rails in, lines in, everything, get that all bolted up. And then we can work on getting these front lines done that run to the regulator, making some really good progress. This looks really good. Um, the hoses are going on much better now that I came up with my timed process, six minutes in the boiling water. Um, the clamps are looking a lot more uniform and even now that I kind of got the hang of that. Also found a forum post basically explaining how to put them on. And you want them in between the first and second barb. Basically, if you see the barbs here, you'll want it right in between this first and second barb, which is what I've been doing. And it looks a lot more uniform. I'm getting the hang of it as I'm doing more hose, it's getting there. So yeah, it's coming out really nice, guys. I'm really happy with how everything's working out. So let me go ahead and stop talking and get this stuff in the truck. All right, so as you can see, we got the fuel rails in, um, the line that goes in the back's all hooked up and connected, as well as our feed down from the Y block. So that's all bolted up um, and ready to go. We started running our lines that are coming out of the front of the rails, this 180 here. You can see the line there is gonna go all the way back behind, kind of come in behind our coolant crossover and run over to the regulator here. Go on that straight fitting there. And then from the front of this rail, you see we're gonna kind of 180 to the side, run behind here. Just gonna loop around and come to that 180 on the regulator there. So we got that pretty much mocked up. We'll go ahead and make those lines and that's gonna button up this fuel system install. At the very end, I'll go over all the routing again in case you guys got a little confused, kind of simplify it. Um, yeah, really happy with how everything's coming out. Um, I did want to take this line, kind of go all the way back around the coolant crossover, and kind of run all of those together. But in doing so, you can give yourself almost no room to get that back plug there. So I was thinking about it, as I actually had it mocked up that way. I was like, oh man, it looks really nice. But then you can't get your hand back here to do that plug. So you gotta make sure when you're planning this out, you think about all the stuff you're gonna have to do down the road, plugs, coils, what's it blocking, what's it running over. So gotta kind of think of that. That's why I ran kind of short with this one and around here, because it's not really in the way. I can move it, got some movability there. Kind of, you know, just push it out of the way. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and build these last couple hoses and we'll finish up this install and kind of do a finalization and go over the finished product. Okay, so everything's done and buttoned up. You can see the regulator there with all the lines attached. Two feeds in the bottom of the return. You can see the one, we'll start at the rails. The one, 180's out of the front of the rail, kind of to the side, goes behind here, swoops around and hooks up to that 180 there. And then I have my other rail, 180 over the top, back around behind everything, kind of looped back through and into the straight fitting there. And then our return, of course, goes down, around back there, and then straight down and back to the fuel hat. Everything is all buttoned up and it looks pretty nice. Um, yes, I do realize that with the parallel system, you will have extra hoses. Um, compared to the series system. For example, we have this hose here that comes around. Um, I already explained why I didn't go further back with that, but I like where it's at. It's not in the way and it's not too bad. It's a black hose, but with a series system, all you would have is you'd have your hose coming across the front here underneath and then the hose coming out from the back to your regulator. So it is less clutter and less hose that way. And it works just fine. I wanted to do a parallel system. I just like the idea of feeding both rails with fuel. That way if something were to happen, you have a little bit more of a margin for error there, but to each their own. You can build a fuel system however you see fit. You can order JJ for instance, JJ at Woodbine Motorsports, sells plug and play kits. He builds them, all the lines are pre-terminated, ready to go. All you gotta do is 
bolt and tighten everything up and you are done. He does all the leg work for you. That's probably the route I recommend 99% of my viewers to go because, I mean, he does all the thinking for you. Everything's pre-thought out, no guesswork. You just bolt it up, you're done. But I just wanted to do something myself. Um, that way I can call it my own. This is my fuel system. I came up with it, built it, everything myself, and I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, you can see I just got a Fragola fuel pressure gauge for the rail there so I can set base fuel pressure. And then I do plan on, I ordered it already, ordered a electric fuel pressure gauge for inside the truck. And I'm gonna run it off this front port on the regulator, run the wire into the cab and hook that up. That'll be in another video. That way I can monitor fuel pressure when I'm doing hits and pulls and all that stuff. It's a good idea. So I went ahead and ordered that. That's pretty much the only thing left to do fuel system wise. This is all done. Um, I'll go ahead and get under the truck and show you how I rounded everything under there. But this is the top side. See everything came out pretty clean. It's not bad. A lot of this stuff will be gone too. This is like vacuum lines. I haven't really messed with that yet. That's going to be coming next. Got to rerun some vacuum lines and show you what to do for that as far as the TVS swap goes. But the fuel lines came out really nice. I'm pretty happy with it. And I think it'll look nice and clean. And of course, this isn't like secured or anything yet. You know, I'll secure that, make it run nice and straight. But it looks pretty good. Um, can barely even see the Y block stuff I did back there. It goes straight down. Also, as you can see, I got my injectors all in. Um, still, the Siemens DECA 60s. I know I'll be asked, so I'm still running 60s. Um, should be enough for what we want to do, but we'll see. We'll be able to tell in the logs when we start tuning. Um, I did have them clean and flow tested to make sure they are on par and where they're supposed to be in spec, and they were all within 2% of each other, so perfectly in spec. So those are in. Um, got my Weapon X coils in. I don't know if I ever went over that in a previous video, but if not, well, I got my Weapon X coils in. I had to do that because the stock coils wouldn't reach because we have those phenolic spacers underneath the intake manifold. So it spaces the coil pack bolts up and when you mount them, it would not reach the plugs. So Weapon X coils are installed. Pretty much everything's buttoned up and sealed up, ready to go. Um, but yeah, everything's coming out really good. Now the next process, I guess, is gonna be tidying up some vacuum lines, paint the blower, slap that bad boy on, and then we can start finishing up our intake setup. I'm probably gonna build a cold air box for where the filter's gonna go. Haven't really dove into all that yet, so. But we'll see, it's coming together though, for sure. All right, so we're under the truck. You can see the back of the engine there, and that's our fuel line coming down. I haven't secured that yet. This will be more on top of the trans further away. Um, plenty of room between the exhaust though. Here's my headers here. You can see it's already a good probably eight inches away and it's gonna be further, like I said. I'm gonna tuck it further down up underneath on top of the trans. Um, that's gonna run down on top of the trans. Slide back. It's gonna run all the way down on top of the trans in the trans tunnel. Kind of loop around above the exhaust shield to where the stock it's basically following the stock routing um loop down and the feed goes to the fuel filter return all the way to the hat so that's how i did that um came out really good you see came out really good you can see i got plenty of clearance to the exhaust it's not going to get hot or anything um, like i said i followed the stock brackets that the hard lines clip into and it keeps it nice and away from the exhaust so that's going to run really nice and pretty simple nothing really to it honestly just follow the stock path now one thing to note i was kind of going back and forth with jj on lightning rotter um and the way he builds his fuel systems he likes to run the lines on the outside of the frame pretty much all the way up into the engine bay I chose to do it on the inside just because that's where the stock routing is and I feel like it keeps it nice and tucked in. Um, but he likes to run it on the outside of the frame, which is does provide a benefit. When you have to do your fuel filter change, it's a little easier to get to if you're unable to fit under your truck as easily as I can. So something if you want to keep in mind. Also, he likes to put on this end here a drain valve 
basically it's a drain fitting with a piece of hose coming down off of it that way you can easily drain the gas out of the lines which i may add in myself that actually is a really good idea so shout out to jj for that idea um i'm probably going to use that um just things to keep in mind when you're doing your fuel system you can run it on the outside of the frame rails you can do it like i chose to on the inside um yeah i mean just you know 100 different ways to skin a cat just do it to your preference this is just what i preferred to do it came out really nice i'm really happy with everything but that's gonna be it for today's video guys drop a thumbs up on the video let me know what you think down below of the fuel system and how everything came out like i said i'm really stoked about it i think everything came out pretty nice and it'll look a lot better once i can clean up some vacuum lines get the blower on there it'll kind of all come together but like i said i am really happy with how everything came out um shout out to jeff wallace on facebook if you guys don't know jeff wallace you guys need to get on facebook i know facebook but it's worth it because you can join some of the groups lightning garage is a good one so go on there search for lightning garage join the group ask for jeff wallace and he can get you any part you need for your truck at the best price period he is the one who got all these parts for me i basically gave him my master list of part numbers and everything i wanted to do and he was able to get all these parts for me for a really good price um, he's also very knowledgeable and can help you source parts if you don't know all the part numbers um, he's done so many stuff for everybody that he knows what works what doesn't what drop do you do you want ask him he'll tell you the best way to get it um, yeah he's a super knowledgeable dude he can get any parts for the cheapest price so make sure you hit up jeff wallace um super cool dude too i mean really easy to talk to if any questions ask him if he doesn't know he can find out super super cool dude and really a pillar of this community so reach out to him for anything you might need this video is kind of sponsored by him i just want to give him a shout out because how much he helped us out with all the fuel system parts so yeah that's gonna be it for today's video guys make sure you subscribe for more we're getting into the good stuff so stay tuned we'll see you next time later